Okay. This is a challenge. So I went from the school level to the district level and to the state level. And I want to piggyback off of what both Will and Jenny have said about climate being fundamental. When I'm doing my work in bully prevention with districts or schools or families or parents or whatever it is, one of the first things I tell people is bullying is a community event and it takes a community to deal with it. In the other conversations when we're talking about prevention and intervention work, I try to remind people that prevention comes first. So preventative activities, creating that climate is critical to do up front. And then I say something that, that kind of goes, duh, awareness is the first step in prevention. So let's be aware of what it is we're talking about, and that goes back to the clear definitions. Now I'm gonna move it up to the, the level of, uh, one of the questions that we were asked to consider, who's, who's missing at the table here this week? And one of the groups that is not here, uh, maybe you are and I don't know you're here, are legislators. And I'm saying that because from the state level, my task is basically to take state legislation, state law, and implement it to basically go to scale across the state with that. We were one of those first states that had a, a, a bullying law a policy, a recommendation or a mandate for a policy. And we were also one of the first states to include cyberbullying in that policy, in that, in that law. And this was seven or eight years ago at this point in time. And it's been updated once or twice in the meantime. The challenge, though, is well-intentioned. We have a very good state law and good policy and so forth, good procedures. But the challenge is to make sure that everything is practical and practicable and implementable. One of the things that we do in Washington, which is not unusual, is we talk uh, colloquially, we talk HIB, HIV, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. We know they're similar, but they're not the same. They're not the same in impact, they're not the same in the way that they're manifested, and there are different legal implications. So as far as a school or a district dealing with these things, part of the conversation is, are we talking bullying? Is it really bullying? Or is it harassment? Is it sexual harassment? Is it racial harassment? Is it something else? In which case, we need to go and have another conversation with equity folks. So it complicates things. So making sure we have clear understandings of what it is we're talking about. Um, looking at my notes, I'm thinking back to what Will said, trying to, trying to make myself clear. Uh, that, that reflects up in the data. One of the things I was able to do recently was take a look at our longitudinal data on the bullying reports that we feed to the feds, it's our federal reporting process, and from the time that our last iteration of policy was, or last iteration of, of legislation and policy was put forth in the state of Washington, so this was a 2009-10 school year until this past school year, the data shows that our, it, our, I gotta use my words carefully here, the rates of suspensions and expulsions for federally reported bullying has dropped almost 50%. That's great. We're doing something good. My question then is, how do I know what we're really doing? And the challenge is to figure that out so that part of that policy, part of what legislators would need to hear is, how do we capture that? What's really going on here? Is it, what is really working? My other part of the question is, the title of the category is bullying, we're collecting data on HIB. What's bullying? What's bullying? What's harassment? What's intimidation? What's something else that may fall into that? Some of those other categories, for example, the things that Will was talking about. Um, our legislation requires training, and we've talked a lot about training over the past few, well, two, few days, two days. We've talked a lot about the need for training and unfunded mandate. There is no funding available to provide training, number one. Number two, by state law, we are required to provide training, or schools and districts are provide, required to provide training on policy and procedure. That's not best practice. That's not what to do. That's not what to avoid. That's not prevention work. That's simply, you need to understand what the law says and how you implement the law. 
not, not best practice in prevention and intervention. So that's a conversation we had. I had a recent conversation with one of our legislators, and we had a little bit of a sidebar on this, and I said, you know, uh, my sons play baseball. And I pulled out a rules, rules of baseball, and I said, here, here are the rules of baseball. You got them? And I want you to go play second base. We're talking about developing skills among our educators, all of our educators, I'm talking large scale educators, the whole community of folks, which includes the families, the parents, anybody in the school, in the school who relates to the kids. We're talking about training on developing skills to build that climate to create safe and secure learning environments for our kids, K-12 and beyond, after school programs, before school programs, and so forth. Um, so legislators need to hear what works, how we can implement that, how we can take that to scale, and that it, it does take, unfortunately, it takes some funding to do that. It takes time, it takes resources, and it takes some people to make, that, to make those things happen. Um, the other group that I, in my, who's missing from the table here today, we had very brief, in passing, uh, mention of 504, I think somebody mentioned that along the way in one of the, one of the presentations. Special Ed and 504 as part of the whole process. Different kinds of issues arise, and so from the state level in working with our policy and procedures and implementing these things, I do a lot of work with our equity office, and I do a lot of work with our special ed office as to uh, really and truly, it's almost like a who's on first. Who takes this one first to make sure that these kids are protected? So I'm gonna stop now because there's a whole lot more any of us I think could say here. <laughs>